Hey everybody, I'm Anthony, and this is BuzzCast Episode 3. Uh, today with me I have... Zeb Reichert. Addison Pettiford. Batman. No, it's Zane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me on that one. <laughs> Alright, um, so as usual we're going to do our yay and nay topics, where we will bring up a topic that came up this week or prior. Um, you, One of our, you know, our members of our cast will give it a yay or nay, and then has two minutes to support their answer. So, with the rules all set... We'll start with you, Zeb. Yay or nay? It's uh, the rumored concept art for Ben Affleck's bat suit in the new Superman movie, or Man of Steel movie, I guess they're going to call it now. Right. Um, I give it a yay. Um, I was able to get a glimpse at the uh, little uh, drawing that was, um, the sketch that was made up, and I like the color scheme. It's a little bit different than what we're usually uh, seeing in Batman, which is black and yellow. This one is black and what looks like red or dark red gold uh, for the bat symbol and the belt. Um, I'm okay with that because it might seem a little bit more stealthy for Batman. It, that really like doesn't uh, make me too angry about it. And other than that, the um, the way the suit is made looks looks pretty cool. It looks very Batman-y. He looks a lot more like a comics Batman than I felt that... Um, the Christian Bale Batman looked. So I give it a yay. Yeah. Addison, yay or nay? I give it a yay. I One of the things that really gets me on it is the uh, where the joints connect. the Because it's still armorish, but if you look at the joints, that you can see that he'll be able to, you know, move his arms more so he won't have the, you know, the, the bicep punch that he did in, uh, <laughs> in, the, in the Christopher Nolan universe. So you can, you'll see that he'll be more... Maybe not as flexible as, you know, other versions of Batman, but a little bit more just... He'll be able to move more. So, yeah, total yay. Zane, yay or nay? Uh... Yay, just because I don't dislike it. I just... It doesn't really seem that much different from any of the other bad suits that we've really seen. It reminds me of the stormtrooper sort of look that we got from Dark Knight Batman, uh the Chris Nolan one where they have these segmented plates. Uh, it makes sense for what Batman would do. It's not that exciting. The uh, logo is different from before. It is a, almost like a Nightwing where it's a solid yellow bat on his chest. Um, it also looks like they're taking some nods from the Night Owl design in Watchmen, which has segmented parts on the cowl. Uh, I, these types of bat suits I find really unexciting, but they get the job done. It looks like Batman. It'll let the actor perform as Batman. I'm more interested in seeing how the person is able to perform in the suit. Mm -hmm. Um, because if it were me, I would have a stunt double like Jet Li or Jackie Chan in the bat suit, but... Pulling off the main students. Yeah. All right. For me, I'm going to give it a yay. Um, like Zane said, I've... I really do like how the the bat on his chest stands out. The last Batman, I mean, I know you saw it, but it was the whole thing was black and it didn't like stand out, so you really wouldn't know what the the bat symbol is. And I know for the theory of okay, he goes out at night and fights crime, and they're supposed to see him as being a monster. But this is also for me. We're not making this movie for the criminals of Gotham. We're making the movie for for moviegoers like me. And I'm I like what I see. I kind of like how it looks like he has. You know, he has he has the played off armor or somewhat armor and then he has like Cavalar. Is that Cavalar? Kevlar, yeah. Kevlar. Um, yeah, and so it looks like he can move a lot better. And I got, I'm tired of seeing like in uh, Dark Knight Rises the fight he had with Bane where it was just like in slow motion. I mean not not that I'm looking for a you know a, a Dragon Ball Z brawl, but I I wanna be able to say he's a ninja. He's supposed to be able to do ninja things. He's not a knight. And I feel like that's kind of what we pushed towards, and, or what they were pushing for in the other in the Nolan movies, is that it was more of a knight than a ninja. Dark you know, knight. yeah, ninjas don't ninjas wear like armor, but they're you know they go out with the attention they're not, they're too slick to get hit, and that's why I kind of think Batman should go out. I mean, he knows he's going to get in a fight, but also have some confidence that something's not going to happen. But uh, either way, I'm going to give it a yay on the way it looks. The odds are it's not going to stick with this image. This is just what they're going to base it off of. What also made me think that it might not be the real one is when you look at the logo, it's different from the one they ha they've been uh, advertising. Because you know how it is supposed well, to be more. Yeah, I, I mean, if this is if this is real, 
I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a real concept art, obviously, but it's if it's what the directors are looking, or the um, producers and directors are looking at, who knows. But we're going to move on to the next topic, which is Forever Evil issue number one. Now, this was the first of the new, of the big event, which is obviously Forever Evil. It started this month for Villains Month, whereas the Justice League has been killed, or is supposedly dead, and the, the saying is, um... The Justice League is dead, and evil shall inherit the earth, or the villain shall inherit the earth. Um, so, issue number one was basically the crime syndicate from Earth Three have come over, and they have collected the the greatest villains in on Earth One to make this super, in you know, Injustice League um, unlimited. So, uh, Zeb, yay or nay for Forever Evil issue number one? Uh, I give it a yay because. From what I understand, the other superhero teams from around the world are going to try to fix what's happened here. Um, and I've always been for stories like these because with the Avenger or not the Avengers, excuse me, the uh, mm-hmm. Justice League, we always get the 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 god the, the god superheroes, the mm-hmm. ones that like are, are just going to beat everyone in like ten seconds flat. Um, the other superhero teams, the other superheroes that are uh, supposedly going to be fighting these guys are the B-team. The ones you don't see very often, don't get the spotlight. Um, I love stories like this because it allows uh, the writers to do other things than let's take this guy that can't be hurt, they can fly, they can do all this stuff, and let's take that super genius over there and that woman that can't be hurt either can make everyone like do whatever she wants. And, and instead they're going, we've got to have these superheroes that have powers that we need to find a way for them to be useful and how they, how can they use their powers like that? It, it, it forces inventiveness and I like that. So I, I am saying yes to this. Yeah. All right. Addison, yay or nay? I give it a yay. Like I, I agree with Zeb. It is, it is kind of um, refreshing to see that we're not just going to see how Superman, Batman and their team are going to beat the bad guys. We have to watch now. We have to see the teen Titans, you know, step up to the plate. We see the birds of prey and so on and so forth. So it is um, good to see. And I did enjoy the book. It was because you don't exactly know what happened. You just all they tell you is we killed the Justice League. That's all you need to know. Leave it at that. But the one page that really just cracks me up every time I see it is when they start throwing the items around oh. and you see everyone like scramble for uh, Aquaman's tight uh, Triton and you know uh, Superman's belt. Yeah. Like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Parasite? Who, no, who's, a uh, Black Manta. Black Manta. He, like, reaches out and is like, no, it is mine! You can't have it! And it's just like, wow. It's really weird to see them at the, like, the legit bottom of the criminal food chain for a change. But, yeah, totally yay. Tell you that. Zane, yay or nay? Nay. Nay! Does everyone already forget Villains United from Final Crisis? Yes. Like, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. the crisis, like, it's just, it's a rehashing a story. It's another, uh, all of our villains put together in this continuity's mosh pit and go at it. I'm unexcited. I could give less of a shit. They're not doing anything new. They are working in stagnant water. Mm-hmm. Um, the entire few bits of the Trinity War and most of the New 52 in general has been directionless and uh, just constant returns to status quo of characters. This isn't doing it for me. So I am, I'm going to say nay. Say nay. Well, I'm going to give it a yay because, you know, well, I, I don't really remember. Cause I mean, I, I read comics, but I wasn't as, you know, I didn't read each comic and I wasn't as invested in comics as I am right now with the New 52, which is basically kind of the reason I did the website and I've done all this because of the New 52. But, uh, no, I mean, I, I, I enjoy it. So, I mean, I'm giving it a yay just because, for me, the concept is, is interesting to, to see. And, uh, I don't know, I, I like, like, like Zeb said, I kind of want to see the, the B-roll people. I want to see um, Red Robin and the Teen Titans, you know, Birds of Prey, the Ravagers, all... Everyone else come together and prove that we, you know, we don't need, we don't need the gods to come down and save us. We can take Rudy, care of ourselves. Rudy. Yeah. Rudy. <laughs> Shut up. Ah, uh, sports humor. Yeah, but um, I'm gonna give it a yay. All right. Um. Also, th- for the next topic, 
CW had released Arrow Season 2's promo spot, which, you know, they're titling, um, they won the, or we lost the battle, but we'll win the war. And it kind of shows the members of the main cast saying what they lost in Season 1. Uh, you know, spoiler alert, the, the rich basically set off a bomb that destroyed the ghetto of, um, of Star, Starling City. And this is going to take a, take place a couple months after, after that event, when you know the superhero or the arrow is going to come back and he's going to try to take his city back. But in this trailer, we'll, we'll just get to this. So, Zeb, what do you think of the promo shot for Arrow season two? Yay or nay? Nay. I've never been a huge fan of the live action uh, superhero uh, stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the the TV show wise. Um, Arrow is in the same vein as, of course, Smallville, and I really didn't like the way that they changed the canon um, in it. Um, And from what I've seen and heard of Arrow, it's along the same lines. They're, like, making their own backstories for things, and it it just really is screwing with my perception of who Arrow is, or the Green Arrow is and was. Um, So I just don't like it. That's Mm. just, of course, this is a very... uh, subjective thing. I, I'm not a big fan of it, so yeah. it's a nay for me. All right, so nay. Addison, yay or nay? Um, I'm going to give it a hesitant yay, mostly just because I'm not a huge fan of this Green Arrow. I'm still like, I'm still a diehard uh, Smallville Green Arrow fan because I thought he was just, he was more likable. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he, when he wanted to be funny, he could be funny. When he wanted to be serious, this guy, he's pretty much trying to pull the whole Batman thing, you know, I'm all happy when I'm around people, but when I'm alone, <laughs> I'm angry about stuff. And when you really think about it, Green Arrow, he's he may not be like happy all the time, but he's not too different from uh, Oliver Queen and Green Arrow. Mm-hmm. So yeah, hesitant, yeah, hesitant. Zane, nay or nay? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say. Uh, Yay, just because it seems decent. I'm oh, sorry. Don't... If you could see me ask this head cut, I'll go, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I'm in the, almost the same boat as Zeb, except I don't have issues with continuity because I don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, you it's, want a good story. Yeah. Like, it, I'm, I was talking to you about this earlier where I'm like, I w- I'm completely okay with people doing their own canon of characters and running with them and writing interesting stories and breaking away from the status quo of these characters to tell interesting stories. Mm. And I like that Arrow has the freedom to do that. I'm interested to see characters like Rachel Wu showing up. I'm interested in seeing new interpretations of some characters. I'm not a huge Green Arrow fan, period, because I find that character super hokey. Mm. But... If you can do something okay with it, whatever. Yeah, yeah. do it. I'm not going to... I'm not going to naysay them doing that think they could have picked a better character than Green Arrow, but so be it. Yeah. Well, uh, that was actually the most shocking part of the show so far. Uh, <laughs> for me, I'm going to give a yay, because obviously, I mean, I've followed the show since the very beginning. Um, I felt, like, personally for me, you know, we, we heard rumor that they were going to do a Justice League movie, and, you know, Marvel has their cinematic universe. Well, I mean, I've had this conversation with a couple other people. You know how... Marvel, you know, their stories are always grand, and like Iron Man, you couldn't tell, you could tell Iron Man's story in, in a one shot, and it has to be pretty, like, pretty, and you know, has all the the most amazing CG and the coolest scenes ever. But with like a Batman story, you don't even have to have that. Like, um, if you guys remember Batman Dead End, was yeah. a, like, I mean, the budget was really low, but it was it was awesome. So I thought, couldn't we have a uh, not cinematic? So it would be what a tele telematic telematic. <laughs> I mean, a, a serial, a serial Justice League, or a DC Universe. Like, you know, we have Arrow. They're introducing that they're doing a Flash, uh, Flash series, which I'm excited for because apparently it's supposed to be the most dead on to to a character that they're going to, like, the so far what I've heard that for the Flash show, they're saying, you know, screw everything else. What you know about the Flash is what you're going to get in the Flash. Like, what you expect from a comic book, you'll get in the series. Like, they're not going to try to, like, hope down the fact that he has super speed. I mean, that's the whole point. That's awesome. And I'm excited for it. But, uh... With Air, I felt like they were just kind of proving that they could do it. Like, you know, the seat, the the graphics for it, 
you know, I'm not going to lie. It's a TV show, so it's not going to be amazing. But it proved to me that we could have a Batman series. And as everyone knows, I'm a huge Batman fan. I would love to see a Batman TV show. because Birds that's of how... Prey tried to do that Yeah, Birds back of... in the early 2000s. But think about it. I mean, yeah, a Batman story cool. couldn't... Like, for me, you know, you could tell a Batman story in an hour, two hours. But imagine a Game of Thrones Batman series. <laughs> that would be incredible. Yeah, so, like... Yeah, put on, like, it, HBO. Yeah, something. HBO. But I don't... Because HBO would just... Everyone would get back into HBO all of a sudden. Like, oh, we have to have instead of downloading it somewhere else. Hey, Time Warner Cable, that would make a lot of money. But, yeah, so, I mean, that that's kind of how I viewed it. This was, like... You know, it's, it's a serious show, but it could have been a test to see... <laughs> <laughs> Zane just drew us a picture of Batman, which I'm, I'm going to post online. Looks like he has a tattoo of the bat symbol on his chest. <laughs> bat nipple. And that's all he's wearing. Bat nipples with small ears. <laughs> it's it's a pasty. Oh. <laughs> all right, but I'm going to give uh, Arrow, the Arrow Season 2 um, promo spot a yay. Moving on to our fourth t- uh, topic, the RoboCop trailer. Now, I know a lot of people, and I won't describe this one because we're kind of going on time, but... No one wanted a RoboCop remake. Everyone said how terrible it was going to be. It's going to be stupid, RoboCop. The first one was already perfect. Why remake it? And, you know, I, I like new stuff, so I was all for it. But after seeing this, you know, never mind. I'll talk when it's my turn. Zeb, yay or nay for, for RoboCop remake trailer? Just the trailer, not the thought of the movie. I'm going to give it a yay because it showed me a bit of this, what the story is going to be. Actually, it did really well as a trailer of telling me what the story is going to be and the RoboCop, um, the art style of RoboCop himself looks pretty cool. And they set up a lot of interesting things to think about, like the mech suits and the fact that the RoboCop is one of multiple RoboCops. And what what is that going to be about? And so I'm intrigued. And so I give it a yay. Yeah, Addison, yay or nay for RoboCop trailer? Um, I give it a yay. Um, I have I haven't seen the original in a long time, so but when I when you look at it, when most remakes they kind of either they go on the same route of what the original looked like, or they just completely discard it. Mm-hmm. But in the trailer, you see that he wears the original like RoboCop look, but then he gets a different one. So you know they're not just like, you know, forget that RoboCop. We're going to do this one. But I mean, he kind of says that in the movie. But he just like you know what? Let's let's uh, make it black and slick it down a little bit. So it's cool. I feel like they are gonna you know hold it up to the original. So I yeah. give it a yay. Yeah, Zane, yay or nay? I'm gonna give it a a yay based on the trailer. But as we all know, trailers can be deceiving. Uh, I'm hesitant to say that just because of the PG-13 rating. I know that they're trying to make this a film that's more accessible to more viewers. But some of the wonderful sort of Judge Dredd-esque satire that was in the first RoboCop film is going to be lost a little bit. This one's just going to be straight action. It's going to be an action movie. And the way that they are teasing how they are handling the RoboCop's uh, questions of humanity, because Mm. in the first film it was they blanked out his mind and used him as the circuit board for the RoboCop program. And this one, he has the illusion of free will, as they teased in the trailer. And I think that that's an interesting twist. I think that that's something new, and just as a movie, I kind of want to see it. I'm going to go in watching it, ignoring the fact that it's a reboot. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to watch it as a decent movie that has the chance to entertain me. Thank you. I'm not going to lie. For a long time, I always thought that you were like the originalist, but more and more that I talk to you, you're just like, you just want a really good story. And that's why I wish people would understand nowadays. It's like, it, it's not about, you know, the, the idea of an original movie. I'm sorry, a lot of original ideas, you could make an original movie, but no one wants that. Yeah. And, you know, we don't know how many original movies have, are pitched every year that people turn down. So your best bet is to, like, you know, if it's not broken, fix it, make it better. I mean, yeah. So this, but this movie, like, like you said, it's, um, it's PG 13, so it's going to be an action movie, which is what. The po- what the, the majority of people want now and um, you know it's not like we're not going to get we're, you know we're not going to get the same story and background and intimacy that we got in the original Robocop but I feel like for what for the day and age we're in right now because let's, let's be honest the 80s and 90s were a dark you know we're in a dark place but they were darker yeah like you know this was made when like nowadays we were, we're sending our soldiers overseas and like 
we would it would be make more sense to send RoboCop, you know, to the Middle East to fight for us. But it, you know, back in the day, gangs and stuff like that were the big thing. So we needed him here in Detroit because Detroit was you know was gangland. Yeah, now it's just Blade Runner land. Yeah, the place looks like it's in a dystopia. <laughs> 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 they didn't even need to they didn't need to do any like uh any set work. I was like, okay. Yeah. Excuse me, sir, can you move a little bit? We're gonna film right here. Yeah, please step into the shot, crackhead. <laughs> uh but yeah, oh, I'm, baby, I'm gonna be on TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a mo- it's a movie, sir. I don't yeah, it's all on the TV. But uh I'm gonna give it a yay based on the trailer. Um I'm excited to see um what's his name? Samuel Jackson and <laughs> Michael uh Michael Keaton. I'm always excited to see Samuel Jackson. Like he's a, I can't think of a time I'm not. But think about like I can I he's the only actor I can think of who's hit so like such a I mean, a wide range of characters. Like I mean obviously there are other characters in the or actors in the world who've done this, but like yeah. he has done just you know, from Nick Fury's super spy, snakes on a plane police officer, a <laughs> a racist black guy who hates white people in interracial couples. Terrible. Police officer. Okay, yes, yeah, he's, he's always terrible. a police officer, but you know, but there's well, no, there's also in Unbreakable. Oh yeah, yeah. He was um yeah, but and Pulp Fiction, like his character in Pulp Fiction was definitely not a police yeah, not, officer. Yeah, not a police officer. And he just hits so many different roles, and that's why it's enjoyable to see him because you're not you don't walk in and expect him. Like I hate see, I just keep saying uh, Christian Bale, um like when he was in Batman and then when he was in Terminator, he had the same voice. And so yeah. when I watched him, I was expecting him to do this to be moody like he was in Batman, and he was. He was yeah. After he set the precedent, in the Machinist. It's kind of always moody. Mm-hmm. Always kind of moody. But yeah, so I'm going to give this a yay. And on a side note, before we move into the final topic, uh, just so you guys know, Batman Superman is going to be filming in Detroit. Beca- and they're bringing how many jobs, Addison? Um, over 400 jobs. Four. That, will, that will need about 6,000 people. Yeah, they are bringing in so much work and stuff like that to Detroit. And they're saying, like, you know, people are against it, but, you know, they're filming in a, in a place that really needs it right now. And I think that's really cool, and I just kind of wanted to point that out for people, that they're bringing jobs back to the city for this film. So We don't need a government. We, government, we just need superheroes. We just need Batman. We just this wouldn't have happened for <laughs> Superman. No one want to work. <laughs> I guess I need to move to Detroit. Yeah. I need a job. Anyway, don't we all? <laughs> yeah, with all just, with the, yeah, this illusion of college degrees. Never Let's mind. all just drop everything and get into this Detroit. rant. All right, uh, final topic for yay or nay will be, rumor is that Joe Sweden is going... Josh. Joss. 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 You said Joss. I said Joss? Yeah. J-W-S. J-W-S. Joss. 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 The guy who directed Avengers <laughs> has rumored that he is planning to kill an Avenger in the Avengers sequel, Age of Ultron. Uh, Zeb, yay or nay for this thought? Um, or do I'll you... say yay just because why not? How about we make this a guessing game? Yeah, it's a ge- yay or nay if you think it's going to happen, and if you do, who do you think it's going to okay, be? Okay, yeah. I think it's going to happen. Um, I would like to see either um, Tony Stark or um, Hawkeye get killed, because if Hawkeye gets killed, it like sparks some ridiculous thing with like Black Widow, who is madly in love with him, and she just, like, goes crazy or goes rogue or something like that. There's something that splits the entire team apart and so the next few stories have to be where it's like what are we doing now mm-hmm. or maybe their movies are perhaps what are we doing now yeah kind of thing okay addison yay or nay i give it a yay and the person i think they might kill is uh steve rogers hmm. so what they could do is That's since they're going to have America. winter soldier he could end up taking up the mantle as captain america right, right. and then that could lead into a captain america 3 and have, you know, the um, the Battle of the Caps when uh, Red Skull takes over Steve Rogers' body. So that could possibly be the third movie. I do really love that story arc. That would be yeah. awesome yeah. If, if they brought that one along. So, yeah, that's a yay? Yeah. Zane, yay or nay? Uh, yay, just because I think it's going to happen. I mean, <laughs> after Game of Thrones, it's just kind of par for the course to kill as many people as you can in your movie. Have more lines than everyone else. Um... I would love to see Hawkeye die, not for the the widow drama, but because of the classic story in Avengers way back in the day where the swordsman, who is another no powers, purple tights wearing guy, dies. And as he's dying, he says to Hawkeye, because they used to be villains together, mm. and they were like some sort of 
crazy villain thief circus. He says, we should never have been in the Avengers. We don't have any powers. Why are we here? And dies. And he never comes back. Ever. And that would just be so fitting. It's like, oh, we're going to fight the god of death? I really shouldn't be here. I'm the only one here that could actually die. Why am I here? I should have definitely taken sick day. <laughs> but uh, that or um, I would actually like to see the Hulk die. Mm -hmm. And this is why. I want the Hulk to go to hell and I want him to punch his way out of hell. <laughs> because having him punch himself back to life would be amazing and that would be the best Hulk 2 ever oh and he God. comes back up in Detroit yes <laughs> oh god Hulk and Ron universe again Hulk in worse hell <laughs> oh god Joffrey it's so low <laughs> At least I had steady work in hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're horrible. <laughs> oh, can't reap unemployment benefits here? <laughs> I think we're the ones who are going to hell. <laughs> okay, for me, obviously, yay, um, because the rumor's been out there. But also, I could see him. Now the hype is that everyone expects he's going to die, and we're all waiting, 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 and it never happens. There are going to be a bunch of, like... You know, almost like you know, like almost like how uh, Iron Man felt at the very end. Yeah. Spoiler alert: if Iron you Man seen almost Avengers. dies in Avengers, but then he Hulk yells and wakes him up. But <laughs> <laughs> Hulk died in Iron Man. It's like, ah, ah. <laughs> but no, Hulk just brings people back to yeah. life. <laughs> For me, uh, the, the person I think they're gonna kill. Breath of Gamma Life. I would really like to see uh, Black Widow die, just because. Aside from being the only female character, she literally was useless. Like, she didn't... Of course, you know, they gave her the ability to close the gate because she had the staff, but anyone could have done that. You know, at least Hawkeye was... You know, they didn't give him a big part, but his scenes were cool. Like, I thought his scenes were cooler than Captain America, considering the fact that, you know, he they had his, uh, his quiver, and, you know, it was the dial on his bow that assigned what kind of arrow he had. He didn't just happen to have, like... Yeah, he had a cool gimmick. The yeah. thing with... It's unfortunate that... Uh, Black Widow is used in the Avengers because I think that there are more compelling female heroes that they could have had. Mm. Like, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, and also, yeah, she just doesn't have a lot going for her in terms of like what what she can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I would have, I like oh, we were talking earlier. You know, She Hulk. I would have liked her to have her own movie, and we even talked about like even a Harvey Birdman type of show for her. But I would, I really want Miss Marvel. I mean, I want a character who's strong. They. The, the, you know, of course it's Scarlett Johansson and, you know, she's really good in some movies, but this character's boring. Like, she, you know, she's always moody, and I know Black Widow's moody, but she didn't even have an accent. And that's kind of what I was looking for, if I had an accent, and... I think what they should do with her is take her from the Avengers and put her in the Cap movies, because if they're going to bring Bucky back as Winter Soldier, they could have... The love interest. The love interest. Yeah, because she was in Russia Because she was in Russia. They were they were trained together, mm -hmm. supposedly. If they, if they go with this route with the movies, they can go, boop, take her off the Avengers and put her somewhere where she's supposed to be and turn her into more of a spy. They should make her a spy. Oh, Again, I want a Nick Fury things. movie so bad. Like, if a they... James Bond Nick Fury movie would be so awesome. Yeah. Like, oh, Nick Fury Samuel L. Jackson is like Shaft James Bond. Oh my god. Do you know how awesome it would be to have like a black exploitation <laughs> James Bond? <laughs> I know this is just another stupid reference. So, the helicarrier and it's like a bunch of hills and all, and, like clouds and you see the <laughs> Good That would be sweet. Yeah. Dude, I, they need to start paying us to come up with movie ideas. They really should. But uh, for this, I you know I think Captain America dying, and I think it'd be really cool if something happened to end. You know, not to follow Civil War, but if he died on the steps, like you know, oh, the, man. you know, at the end of the movie, they want someone to be responsible for all the damage that happened in New York. Like at the end, like Fox News, basically, we're like, we need to blame someone for this, and you know, then they're like, where are the Avengers now? Why aren't they taking responsibility? What if at the end of this movie? Ultron happens and it's Tony Stark's fault and Cap's just like, don't worry, I'll take I'll I take the bullet for you. And he walks up to be, you know, to be, you know, trialed, tried, and when he's walking up, he gets killed. Someone kills him. Don't you um I know you when we first saw the Avengers, your your theory was that one of the council members was uh, yeah, Red the, Skull, right? The the main councilman that's always in black, 
who seemed to be leading the tribunal. Yeah. I think that's who Red Skull is now. Like, he was thrown into... Like, you know how he's supposed to be a senator in the comics? Well, in this... It, what if he's one of the... One of the members... The counselors on the tribu- tribunal for the S.H.I.E.L.D. So, like, in... How it was in Avengers Assemble, where one of the people yeah. hidden was the Skull? I could maybe see that. Well, the thing is, with the Skull, how they've handled him right now, he's somewhere with the Cosmic Cube... Somewhere like over the, the, the cosmic cube did something to him and teleported him somewhere. I want them to do a Beyonder because oh. they have the cosmic cube now. Mm-hmm. We've already got one of our villains out floating in the ether. So, what are we going to do next with him? The following up with an Infinity Gauntlet sort of deal with Thanos because we've already seen the Infinity Gauntlet and we've seen Thanos. Mm-hmm. The next thing would be a Secret War. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool just to get a one shot of. Of Red Skull, and you just see him floating in space, just like this. Well, this didn't work out well. <laughs> He's just like floating in space. All right, well, this was an ultimate failure. <laughs> yeah. We're just at our thirty-one minutes for the podcast. Um, so that's the end of Yay or Nay. Um, it was fun, and next next week we're gonna do another Yay or Nay. We're gonna try to do this every. We're filming right now on Sunday night, and it'll be up tomorrow Monday. But uh, Addison's going to do a little bonus category for us for this special episode. Addison, you want to explain that? Yes, I do. Since it is Villains Month in the, in the DC Universe, which means all the titles are now featuring uh, their own villains, I asked everyone to come up with their favorite villain, and this is what we're going to be doing for the rest of the month, every sun, uh, every day during the month. Oh, right. When, well, not every day, but when we have... Every Buzzcast, we're going yeah, to showcase, showcase, gonna showcase our own favorite villain. And um, I'm going to have Zeb here tell his favorite villain and why is his favorite villain? And two minutes for loss. <laughs> and two minutes for loss. Yes. Okay, so my favorite villain of all time is Khan Noonien Singh as played by Ricardo Montalban in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Khan is such an awesome villain because he is vengeful and he's like a super god in a world, in a, in a universe of just ordinary beings. Even like the aliens in this in this universe are just like they're they're you know just normal to themselves. But like Khan is just like this ubermensch and a badass, and he blames Kirk for killing his wife and endangering his people, even though it wasn't his fault. And so Khan is just like this ultimate bad guy because he does everything possible to kill Kirk and and make him feel all of the pain that he felt um, whether it was deserved or not because in his mind it was mm-hmm. um, so yeah and also Ricardo Montalban makes a really awesome villain so that's my reasoning behind, behind that uh, Anthony? No, I'll go last Okay. well uh, my favorite villain that I chose is uh, Mr. Freeze because the one thing that I always liked about the, um, certain villains is they have a good, like a kind of a legit reason for doing what they're doing. Because if you don't know, uh, Mr. Freeze or Victor Freeze had um, his wife Nora was terminally ill, and one of the things he did was he cryogenically froze her so that the illness wouldn't spread. And I'm not sure exactly what happened, but something caused him that he also had to be in. Uh, cryogenic suit so he um so he had to be cold all the time and that's what caused him to be a villain because he has to you know get resources to help his wife so everything he does is for a reason and that's what you know that's what makes me like certain villains is that they have a good reason so yeah that's why i chose mr freeze i have a lot of favorite villains and this is really difficult for me because i'm that kid that roots for the the villains in movies and things like that um but because I have such a plethora of villains I enjoy, I'm going to have to pick the one that I think really just is the best evil character. Not with flaws that you can be like, oh, I could see why he would do this, make these choices. I could see why, you know, Doctor Doom becomes flawed because of his pride, or Rachel Ghoul is just misguided and fanatical, uh, or the Joker's just insane, so he acts this way. I'm going to have to go with kind of a cult villain. His name is Ming the Merciless. Ooh. And he's from the Flash Gordon film. The, the the one I'm really pointing at is the Flash Gordon film from the 80s. And while that movie was terrible, Ming the Merciless was amazing <laughs> because he, he's a, a complete sadist and a heathen. 
He's got just like women all around in this pleasure castle, and he at one point has his daughter, uh, who's like a, a princess of the blood. She's being tortured by the secret police of his regime, and she's talking to the torturers. And, when my father finds out, he'll have you flayed alive. And then, like, oh, well, we should tell your dad right away. And they open the secret door, and Ming is just chilling there eating grapes, watching them torture his daughter. And she goes, Father, make them stop. No, proceed. And just continues watching them torture his daughter while he's eating grapes. It's like, what? What is this guy? Must be some really good grapes. <laughs> you can't distract me now. He's like, what? No, he's like eating the grapes, they open the door, he's like, he, like, hides behind the wall, just like... <laughs> no, no, Ming would be... This is the thing. Like, Ming is just so unabashedly evil that it's glorious. He revels in his evil. But that's me, yeah. Ming the Merciless. All right. Well, my... I mean, he's my favorite villain of all time, and it's Two-Face. And for me, it's... And not just any Two-Face. It's Batman the Animated Series, the Richard Mull version. Or the Richard Mull voice one. Because in the series... If you guys don't know about me, I'm multiracial, okay? I'm black and white. And to me in the series, he looked mixed. So I always felt like I could relate to him, and it, it made more sense that he was multiracial and he was two-faced, so he's yeah. half and half. <laughs> but, uh, see, for me, I really started liking him when I got older, especially when I started reading the, uh, the graphic, not the graphic novel, but the comic books for the animated series. Because they were just... It was almost a shame that a lot of them didn't make it to a TV version. Uh, there's one where... Ra's al Ghul busts into Arkham and releases, or his soul, uh, his League of Assassins released people in the um, in Arkham to keep Batman busy as they as they steal something or whatever. And Two Face is in his cell, and you see a coin flip, and like his his room opens, and then it lands um, the right side, like the clean heads, and he jumps out and he starts to fight the uh, League of Assassins, and it's solely because he flipped a coin, and if it was tails, he would have gone and shot Batman in the face, but he didn't. It was like so. There's still there's still the Harvey Dent, and it never leaves. So, he, you know, he can be the cruelest person ever, but at the same time, <clears throat> at the same time, he's, you know, he's still Gotham's white knight. And, you know, even in uh, Batman Arkham City, the scene where he, uh, he goes to, he's getting ready to kill, uh, kill Cat when he has her hanging there, and he flips a coin, and he's talking like he's two <clears throat> Sorry, that's my two faces. Talk. He's talking like he's two faced. Like Everyone can do it but me. <laughs> but then at the same time, then he goes yeah. and he says, makes a quote about justice and how important justice is, and you know, Screw I don't know. justice, fear is yeah, what we yeah. use to control them. Yeah. So he kind of like, but in Arkham, in Arkham City, he talks to himself. It's like going back and forth. Yeah. And in the anime series, Big Bad Harv, Two Face was a person that he made Big to Bad to to excuse like he was bullied one day and he beat up his bully. And he created this alter ego to take the blame, like, to make it okay that he did this. Because he felt so bad about this kid getting beaten up and thought he did worse. But, uh, you know, every reincarnation of Two-Face, even the, um, the Tommy Lee one, I thought was... I enjoyed He was more like a pimp Two-Face. <laughs> and, you know... Uh, you know but, but, Two-Face. But there, there was just there's something about him I like. And my favorite will always, always be the Batman animated series, yeah. the... You know, I know a lot of times that now they have like uh, his, half his suit is burnt, where his face got burnt. But I like the the mobster. You know, he he has a suit. He went and had that suit custom made to be black and white. You know how hard it is to find a tie that's half black, half white. I'm telling you, it's freaking hard. I've looked. And really, I have looked for the costume. And if you all remember in the Michael Keaton 1989 Batman, oh yeah, I guess who was playing uh, Harvey Dent. It was Billy D. Williams. Yeah. That man would have made a fantastic, fantastic Two Face. Like I would have paid money to see that. Yeah, but overall, Two Face is my favorite because it's just you know, a flip of a coin. Fifty fifty if I help you or not. Fifty fifty if I kill you or not. And I mean, I kind of I'm getting annoyed with the idea that every villain is now a terrorist. Like you can't have, you know, the Joker had bombs set. You know, the Joker would do that kind of stuff, but it was like it was threatening. And with Two Face, it was is a mob thing. Like Batman would have to come in and stop him from stealing something or killing something, but the city would not be at ransom. And I'm so tired of ransom movies. Like the Lizard had a, had a well, actually his his made a little bit more sense than yeah. He he wasn't really ransoming people. He was like I'm going to lead you to a new life. 
Yeah. Tie out people. Yeah. I miss the. Uh, <laughs> oh God. I miss the Two Face that was. I'm going to steal all of the two dollar bills from the second national bank. Two million dollars in two dollar bills. And just for the record, when, when we ever talk no. about what, well, how we want a Batman villain to be, we will always reference the Batman the Animated Series because they just because they got right. they got it right. And people can argue that. Okay, we grew up on it. Like that was our that was Except my for first. Bane. Yeah, Except that was Bane. a bad Bane. I am Bane. Bane. <laughs> <laughs> At least they got Ron Perlman later on. That was pretty good. Oh yeah. yeah. Recording. You're recording. Yes. All right, mom, come here. This is my mother. She came downstairs. This is the first time we've decided to film inside the house. Usually we film in the studio, which is in my garage. Well, it's really, really hot in there. So we decided to do it in the air conditioning. So, uh, Mom, who's your favorite villain in comic books? doesn't have to be a, a comic or not comic book. Your favorite villain in general. Any media. Any media. Favorite villain. Get, gotta get closer. It could be the blonde kid from the uh, Karate Kid. If, if that's <laughs> oh, how, sweep if the that's leg, Johnny. S- no. Since, Zane, most, since you said you like the villains. Most interesting villain from early times would have to be from Batman and it was the Riddler. Um, it, but it was from the, the, you know, the series of the sixties and he was just, he was, he was, really? very, Batman? Yeah, and he was, and he would run around. He was so I just giddy. Absolutely, yeah. I just absolutely loved him. I just, you know, there was his question mark, his riddles, the way he talked to Batman. Yeah, not um, the Jim Carrey Batman, mind you. No, or, uh, no, Riddler, mind you. No. The, the old one with Adam West, right? Yeah. Yeah. The old one with I Adam love West. that Riddler. I, I yeah. love that. I, I just I, I just loved it. It was simplicity with being complex all at the same time. That's what made a good villain. And Do you want him to fight that Batman? <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> it. He would look like this big compared to that Batman. And you guys wonder why me and Anthony turned out so yeah. well. You guys are all amazing. I just had to take a picture of you. Okay. Great minds. So, yeah. So, I guess that was this week's villain... What, what kind of name we get this? Villain, uh, villain... Villain Roundup. Villain Roundup. So, this week, Zeb picked... I'm going to say your person. Khan Noonien Singh. Mr. Freeze. Ming the Merciless. Harvey. Two-Face. No, that's a terrible one. Two-Face. Wait, Harvey. should I say like... Harvey Two-Face. Mr. Freeze. <laughs> Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze. Super Kame Freeze. Khan Noonien Singh. <laughs> Hail Ming, Emperor of the Galaxy. <laughs> Chill, guys. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was actually a really fun episode. Um, if you guys would check us out on uh, check us on our website www.thedynamicbuzz.com. Also, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Our social media are, you know, pretty outstanding. We will share stuff, post stuff that we don't put in articles, you know, in easy form so you don't have to, you know, read forever and get on your mobile devices. Also, get on our YouTube page and subscribe to us. We're trying to post videos on a regular basis. Also, know that we're getting ready to start this Thursday. We're going to start posting reviews on a bunch of different things. So that's not exactly news. That's time-based. But it should be interesting to keep you guys, give you guys a more broad Broad understanding of comic book media, comic book related media. Comic culture. Comic culture. Thank you, Zane. Um, so yeah, as always, I'm Anthony. I'm Zane. I'm Zeb. I'm Addison. And this was Buzzcast episode three. See you guys next week. Buzz out. Buzz out. Buzz Bird. Out. Son. Word up to your mother with her great <laughs> taste in comic book villains. <laughs> All right.